Good morning everybody and welcome back to another episode of Dirt Green Steel. So, this morning, Dad and I are working on the 720 a little bit. And we decided to take the cover off of the fuel system on the 720 because it's the last thing on top that uh, we're not going to be putting a new gasket in. So we thought, well, we'll just go ahead, we'll take it off, put a new gasket in it, and then we'll make sure that that doesn't leak also. So I figured I'd take this opportunity to take it off. And we will go through the uh, fuel injection system on the 720 just to kind of show you what's under this cover, which it is, it is sealed up pretty good. Maybe we shouldn't have taken it off, but, well, there it is. Well, we'll take it off. We'll have a look under here anyways. Set the cover to the side. So, the way the fuel system works on the 720 is on the governor housing, there's a fuel transfer pump. From the fuel transfer pump, it uh, pumps the fuel up to 12 to 24 PSI, pushes it through the filter housing, comes out of the filter housing, and comes inside the block here. Inside the block, there are two injector pumps. They can either be Bendix or Bosch. They look basically the same, but you should never have you should always have two of the same in the tractor. Don't put one Bosch, one Bendix. Make sure it's either two Bosch or two Bendix. So from out of the injector pumps, which are just a plunger type pump run off the cam followers back here, the fuel exits these, goes through the injector lines, and comes out of the injectors at uh, 2400 to 2600 PSI. And uh, that's what makes the tractor run. So everything looks good in here there's nothing that looks bad so we're going to clean this up real good get this whole gasket off and uh, we'll get a new gasket ordered for it that way we know that after we paint the tractor there won't be uh, any issues of this leaking because we would hate to uh, repaint it and then this start leaking out from under this cover and run down the sides of the block it would just be a mess so just go ahead and reseal it Okay, so I got the camera down off the tripod, and I figured I'd give you a little closer look of what's going on in here. So these are the cam fowlers. These are run by the cam. They push on a rod that pushes on the bottom of the injector pump. The injector pump plunger moves forward, pushes the fuel out through the line, and into the injector right here. Let me get my light. We'll put a little light on there. Those are the injectors right there. So... Another thing I didn't notice from the other side and Dad pointed out when I walked over on this side was this gasket. It's not even close to where it needs to be. It's shoved over and who knows how long that little bit would have stayed sealed. So it's definitely a good thing that we pulled this cover off because that could be, you know, a couple hours of running from leaking. So it's a good thing. So we're going to get this all cleaned up. We'll take die grinder with a scotch bright wheel and uh, clean all the way around this and get it prepared for a new gasket, and we'll get a new gasket ordered for it. I figured I'd have to clean that cover. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. That's all right. <laughs> There we go, all nice and clean, ready for a new gasket. Okay, so I have the governor housing up on the table. I'm going to work on cleaning it up, and I figured while I got it up here, we might as well talk about it. So, we've talked about the fan shaft being really loose in the tractor. You know how a light bulb kind of goes off in your head after the fact? Well, we got to thinking about it. All of this is all connected to the cam gear of the tractor. And this all, well, it runs off the idler gear. It runs off the idler gear 
of the tractor and the idler gear was the one that was really loose and plus the looseness of the cam gear. Well, after thinking about it, when we were moving the fan, we were taking all the slack out of those gears that were extremely loose. And with the couplers being loose on the fan shaft also, all that magnified and made the fan really loose. So in theory, if you think you have a problem in the governor housing, go to the fan and rock the fan back and forth. See how far the fan, if it goes an extremely amount back and forth, you better pull the governor housing off and check. So anyways, going through how the governor works. The governor works basically, it's a little loud because this plate isn't quite right, so this gear isn't quite right when I'm turning it. But how it works is the weights, they fly out under high RPM. They move this, and this moves your rack and your pump. And this is what controls your throttle right here of the tractor. Because this pushes on the end of the fuel rod that runs through the injector pumps that basically meters of fuel tell the tractor it needs more fuel or less fuel. So this rod right here is what you pull when you want to shut the tractor off. And this shuts the fuel off in the injectors and in the injector pumps and that's what kills the tractor also. This gear right here is your, well you can't see it on the video, but that's your tack drive. That's what the tack cable hooks up to and shows you in the dash what your RPMs are. And then also at the end of the shaft we have our fan drive. This comes out and goes to the front of the tractor for, to run the fan. And then this is the fuel supply pump that makes 12 to 24 pounds of fuel pressure that supplies the injector pumps in the block with fuel after it goes through the filter base and into the tractor. So kind of a little explanation of how this all works. Uh, the tractor slow idle is supposed to be set at 700 RPM by the book, but I have seen and dad's seen these that run slower than that as slow idle. You can adjust them to, well, however slow you want them to run. Uh, fast idle is about 1250. Under a load, they run about 1,125. Um, this tractor on the belt pulley is about 58 horse, and on the drawbar, it's 53 horse. So I'll give you a little information on that. I don't think we've ever covered that. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up and uh, get it to the point where it's ready to go back on the tractor. i got to clean up these gasket surfaces and clean up this, uh, this housing and get it all ready to put back on. Well, another thing we're going to do while we're, we're in a restoration process on tractors, we're going to redo the brakes because they don't work, well, they don't work at all right now. So, Dad's going to take the drum off. We'll see if this one will come off. We're going to do it, try to do it without taking them completely off the tractor. So, you're going to see if that nut will come off. Sure. Sometimes you get lucky and they'll slide off. What you're supposed to do is unbolt the whole thing out of the tractor and put the nut back on and tap it on the concrete floor and it'll make the uh, drum slide off. But we're trying to avoid having to take them out of the transmission. Oh, you didn't bring your hammer? lucky on that one. See what the brakes look like. Yeah, 
There we go. And that's how you can take them off if you don't want to take them completely off. So definitely, yeah, it's going to need new brake linings. Them are pretty warped. Yeah, we're going to have to free all that up and get it all working the way it's supposed to. So there's another project for us to do. Okay. Now we're going to take the shoes off. They froze in there? Yeah. Yeah, the adjustments are froze up. So what basically happens is when you turn this in or out, it's tapered on the end and it shoves out on these pins and that's what adjusts your brakes. So right now, all this is froze up in that housing. So we'll have to get it all freed up and get it apart. So we're gonna spray it with some old rusty, or uh, some of the Creepola from uh, the Mulehead brand. We're gonna try that on these. This is a good candidate. So we'll put some on it and let it soak for a while. And maybe, Maybe they'll come apart in a little bit. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so Dad and I are on the other side of the tractor. And uh, we're going to uh, yeah, we're gonna use the torch to heat this one up and free it up. The other side we're going to use a creep hole on because the deal I have with the Mulehead Company they uh, let me use some of their products. They send them to me to try out. So uh, I use just so much of their stuff in the video, and we do stuff other ways also. Just keep the videos exciting. So this is another option you have to free these up. Really, we need to get this rod out because that rod locks into that adjuster. And right now, if that froze up, that adjuster really can't turn because that rod's got it basically blocked off or stuck. So we'll get some heat on these and then uh, I'll show you when we get them to start moving. If not, the uh, video will be pretty long. Too hot out of the place of the sea over there. Yeah, it's starting to move. Let me get vice grips on it, see if I can jerk it out. Please don't.
Well, there's the pin out. I don't think you hurt it too bad. I think we can fix it. So, did you get that freed up? Yes. So it turns now. Okay. So now we can thread them out and I seize the hell out of them. And we'll anti seize these pins really good, clean them up, wire wheel them, clean the holes out, and I seize them. And uh, we'll have a working brake again after we uh, rivet new linings on the shoes. So we're probably going to order the uh, tool from Steiner Tractor to put the rivets back in. It's probably the best way to do it. So we'll have to get that ordered. And then we can get our brakes rebuilt. Well, we came to the side that had the creep hole on it. I clamped vice grips on it. And I tapped on top of the housing that that's in a little bit with a hammer. And uh, wiggled a little bit and it came right out. And you can see it's wet all the way to the end. So that means that creep hole had done its job and it did get to where it needed to go and made it all the way through. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Uh, we didn't have to heat this side. So the creep hole definitely works. So it's a good product. We've been using it for like two months now in the shop and uh, we've used it on several different things and it works really good. So I need to order some more of that. So now we moved on to the actual adjustment with the creep hole on it and uh it did well there too it's got it broke loose so definitely is a good product and very nice people to deal with the only thing is you can't go directly to the mulehead company or mulehead brand company to buy you have to go through one of their uh their stores that they sell to that sell the product so around the Indiana area, any Bain Welker equipment dealers, Case IH dealers, have their stuff on the shelves. Um, there's a few other places. I, I always get all their products through the Bain Welker locations because that's where we do all our business for our uh, Case IH equipment. So that's where we get it. So... But if you get on their website, they do have a, a list of their dealers. So, okay, the brakes are all tore apart now. That's a good thing. Just have to order stuff. Well, that's all we're going to have time for today. Uh, we got them brakes apart. We got that cover off. We got the governor housing all cleaned up. Uh, I worked on cleaning up the uh, fan shaft and stuff. So uh, my tune-up kit came in the mail for the uh, the MC. So we do have those parts on hand now. So uh, probably next week we'll uh, do a tune-up on the MC. Wilson's going to fall asleep on the... Okay, well, he's going to do that. So anyways... Uh, if you like this episode of Dirt Grain Steel, give me a like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you to all the new subscribers that I've picked up in the last couple days. Things have been going good. I've been gaining subscribers hourly, which is pretty cool. So I appreciate everybody that's subscribed. Um, I need to get caught up on some comments. I've read through them. Just haven't had time to reply to them. I've been replying to them as I get a little time. So I will eventually get to your comment. So uh, thank you for watching, and we will see you all in the next one.